Greetings and welcome to another powerful edition of the Community Defender Talk Show, One Powerful Hour of Truth, Dispelling Falsehood. I'm your host, Brother Daryl Muhammad. I'm Sister Deborah Muhammad, and welcome to the Community Defender Talk Show. And of course, we have a, a wonderful show planned for you. Tonight's topic is the black man must know slash face the truth. And so, and the reason that we uh, chose two words there, know and face, is because the truth has been available right. uh, for our people to partake in. Mm -hmm. But wishful thinking rather mm. than logical thinking That's right. sometimes takes over. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I wanted to mention before we got into everything, if, you, if you, everybody will indulge me just for a second, I wanted to uh, take pause and to mention uh, my beloved grandmother, Artense Boya Culver, who uh, died uh, a little more than a week ago, uh, Thursday before the, the, the last, and uh, she had just made 103. And a lot of uh, uh, people in the viewing, viewing audience are my Facebook friends. A lot of them have sent you know, condolences uh, via social media. I definitely appreciate it, and uh, we um, had a wonderful uh, memorial uh, for her, a wonderful uh, service to honor my 103-year-old grandmother, uh, a, a black woman born in the Jim Crow South, mm. uh, who, uh, you know, she was so beloved uh, all over America, really. Uh, people came in from New York, Detroit. Mm -hmm. The church was entirely uh, just too small to accommodate the outpouring of love uh, that we got really from everybody uh, as a family. Uh, my father, uh, who, who, who passes a, a, a mega church, uh, he came in and did the eulogy uh, for my grandmother at the request of my mother. And it was my maternal grandmother that passed. But it's wonderful that these two great families, that I'm a part of both families, have that love and respect for one another over the years that people came all from Atlanta to pay their respects uh, to my beloved grandmother. Now, the reason that I'm mentioning it, and most people have never, you know, you've never met my grandmother, but part of what makes me who I am is the people that touched me and, and were a part of me. And part of what makes me Brother Darrell is the fact that she was our tense, that my uh, father was who he was, my grandfather was who he was, or fathers were who they were. And all of that went into the mm -hmm. making of me and who I am today. And so none of us just are put out here. There's always a, an understanding that we come from a lineage. We come from... Uh, experiences mm -hmm. and uh, our beloved mother, the, the matriarch of our, of our family, uh, 103 years old. Uh, I was there when she made 103 a few days before she passed. And uh, I'm blessed, you know, to have been a part of her life and for she to have been a part of my life. And, it, and, and when I look at her, I know that what the honorable Elijah Muhammad and Honorable Louis Farrakhan teach about the very divine nature of mm -hmm. our people yes, is sir. absolutely true. And uh, when I was at the church on yesterday, now granted I'm a Muslim uh, with the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, right. the Nation of Islam, believing in the teaching of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, but I was embraced, kissed, and hugged by a lot of my Christian family. Mm -hmm. And so whenever there's true love there, this is the thing I'm coming to, religious label doesn't matter when there's true love. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. The only reason that a religious label can keep you from your brother, your sister, your cousin, is if the love is absent. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, I have a Christian mother, Christian father, but the love is there. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason. And, and, if, and if it is... Well, is not a barrier between me and my personal family. It need not be a barrier between us and our greater original family mm -hmm. throughout America 
the 50 or more million uh, blacks and the 50 or more million brown Spanish speaking people, the religious labels that divide us, as the Honorable Louis Farrakhan said, have to begin to come down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so uh, this was a wonderful woman yes. who led a wonderful life, married over 65 years. Her husband, uh, my grandfather, died some 17, 18 years ago. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line of it is, you know, she was the epitome of the virtuous woman. Right. She was a woman who truly attempted to love everybody. That's right. And so, uh, and she believed and she had a strong and abiding faith in God. And so uh, she will always be remembered. And at some point, I would like to put a graphic at some point of her face uh, at another time. And just, and some of you may have uh, grandparents the same way. I think that a lot of people will see their family members mm -hmm. in my grandmother mm -hmm. because I know we're not alone in, in, in the beauty that God has blessed us with in our elders. Mm -hmm. we, I know I'm not alone, and that's the beauty of God, that he has blessed so many families like he has blessed mine. And, uh, you know, after the funeral and after everything, I felt so refreshed this morning. Mm -hmm. And I've driven uh, probably eight or nine hours all together, and I feel refreshed uh, mm -hmm. because of the wonderful experience that we all had in coming together. And I, I knew as I was sitting there in that Christian church, I knew that the teaching of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad was in fact 100% true mm -hmm. by what I saw in that church from my own family members. And so uh, I want to thank everybody who uh, offered your condolences. Uh, for my grandmother, many of you who know me uh, from long ago have met my grandmother. Mm. Uh, maybe you met her 25 or 30 years ago, but she just passed, and uh, we just buried a, a wonderful woman. But we uh, hopefully we didn't bury her spirit, we didn't bury her legacy, uh, and we didn't bury the love that she all taught all of us uh, to have for one another. And we're going to attempt to stay as God wants us to be, and that is together. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I wanted to lay that out there. Uh, and I know some of you are like, I don't even know your grandmother. I know you don't know her. But if you know me, to a large extent, you know her. And, uh, and so um, having said that, we'll get into our subject. We have so much going on uh, in the news and in the world, and uh, we know that the, the lens of the teaching of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the, the message by Minister Farrakhan are a way to see through the doom and gloom mm -hmm. and the chaos right. of a world that is on its way out. I just want to say that the Western world that has oppressed the original people is on its way out and a new world is on its way in. Mm -hmm. It's looking like Donald Trump could be the last president of the United States. I don't know. I can't see the future, but it's looking like Donald Trump may very well be the last president of the United States mm -hmm. because it looks as though he will destroy all of the institutions of the country mm -hmm. that white supremacy has relied on. And many of you believe that Donald Trump was going to run the country like a business because he was a businessman. And what he has done is create larger deficits. Everything you thought was going to happen good is happening bad. It, it's, it's remarkable that this kind of ineptitude is accepted by those people who pride themselves in efficiency for you to be still behind Donald J. Trump. I think it's middle initially J. Is it, it J? Is. It is. Yeah, uh, uh, J is for Jackie. I mean, uh, 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 anyway, this guy is insane because he is a reflection of the insanity that's in the general population. He's not alone. There's a bunch of crazy dummies out there that go into a voting booth and literally self-destruct by way of the vote. Uh, you know, and of course we've done that. 
Because as black people in Alabama, uh, they voted years ago for Wallace, who was a straight up racist. Uh, we voted as black people for Bill Clinton, mm -hmm. who, who, as the Honorable Louis Farrakhan said today, was the worst president for black people ever in his policy. Yet he, he has a lot of support, but that's because we are blind. Mm -hmm. And when you're blind, you, you really can't see properly. And most of us voted for his demonic wife mm -hmm. to be president, thinking that that was going to be better than Trump. That's right. I'm here to tell you that America is going, you can't save this thing. Mm -hmm. We are on the Titanic, and the Titanic is sinking. And so the lifeboat that we need is the lifeboat of unity of our people. Without you, don't talk about black power without black unity. Sister Deborah, you probably had something. Well, uh, first of all, I would just like to, um, of course, say to you and your family, you know, that our prayers are with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure that the prayers of the viewing audience, those who have seen you over this almost two decades now, mm -hmm. is with you. And Miss Artense was a beautiful, beautiful, not just a beautiful soul, but just such a wonderful human being. And every time you would talk to her, she would always be talking about the Lord. I mean, every time. And uh, I just had wonderful conversations with her the times that I would talk to her because she was just such a beautiful, beautiful person. And when you were uh, mentioning about the Christian family and you as a Muslim being able to unite uh, based on love, interestingly enough today, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan spoke at Reverend Willie Wilson's church in Washington, D.C. on a program that was dealing with the, uh, the spirit of the Million Man March, right? Mm -hmm. And they brought up, before the minister spoke, two young brothers. Uh, they probably were in their, uh, their early 20s. They were twins, or they are twins. And when they came up to the podium, one of them had a button-up shirt. Both of them had on a suit. One of them had a button-up shirt with a little button right there, you know, to the side, like a Nehru collar. And the other one had a shirt like you have on with a collar and a bow tie. Now, mind you, they're, they're identical twins. One of them came up, the one with the little Nehru collar came up with the Bible in his hand. And the one that had the bow tie came up with the Holy Quran in his hand. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that, you know, the, the, the one that wore the bow tie was a follower of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. And the one that had the, the Bible in the Nehru collar was a, uh, a Christian who was a member of Reverend Willie Wilson's church and had just preached his first um, sermon this past Wednesday. Mm. And they were saying that, you know, if them as identical twins that have, you know, different perspectives of the one God that they can agree upon as twin brothers and see the, the unity of the oneness of God and both appreciate both, you know, perspectives, that surely we can. Mm -hmm. You know, Absolutely. so I just thought that was a beautiful, beautiful uh, symbol of how we can unify um, both Muslim and Christian. And so, you know, I think that that is a wonderful, wonderful place to start about the unity. But as you said, that the, the, the key thing is understanding the truth, you know, and uh, knowing the truth and accepting the truth. Because one of the truths that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that will help us literally get up overnight is the true knowledge of who Jesus is. And that's one of the truths that have been, we've been misled by for so long. And so that is one of the things that will give us, you know, the power to overcome, you know, a true, Satan. A true understanding of Jesus or uh, what a savior is. Yes, yes. Yeah. Because our understanding of Jesus that was given to us by Europeans and European theologians mm -hmm. who a lot of times were absolute liars. Mm -hmm. uh, that theology 
you know, hadn't saved us from alcoholism, drug addiction, mass incarceration, being beat by the slave being beat master. by the slave master, mm -hmm. uh, all of these things that because we really need to be saved from those things that are ill affecting us now. Mm -hmm. And a God that cannot save you on the earth mm -hmm. will not save you after you die. Mm -hmm. That whole concept of being saved for another time after you die mm -hmm. is crazy. We all, as minister, as the Uncle Louis Farrakhan said today, we all have a reproductive system mm -hmm. because we're not going to live forever. So we are allowed by God's permission to reproduce ourselves and that our children are the focal point of what we need to work on if we desire a greater future. So everything that's living can reproduce. And the reason for reproduction is because all of us are temporary. Right. Now, the eternal life comes in mm -hmm. through an intergenerational existence right. where you go from what, this one begets, this one begets, this one begets, that one. You live on through your offspring. But we all have to leave behind some good right here on this earth. The whole idea of a pie in the sky after you die is the false teaching of our enemies that we need to dispense with. And as the minister said, stop regurgitating or That's reciting right. the enemy's That's crap. Foolishness. You mm -hmm. know, it's foolish for you to believe certain things. Now... Well, well, before you move on, I just want to mention one point about this reproductive um, ability mm -hmm. of, of everything that is living. That's one of the signs of life, that it has the ability to reproduce. Mm -hmm. Now, um, according to uh, Western science and, and, and um, academia, Brother Darrell has talked about it before, that Europeans both here in America and in Europe, by the year 2060, they said that it's possible that what we know as Europeans can be extinct because of the fact that the birth rate that they have, they, you know, for every one that dies, for every one that's born, there's one that dies, so they have a zero, you know, birth rate. And so if they keep going in this trend and they're not having enough children, and so if they keep on this trajectory, by 2060, they predict that the birth rate of, of uh, well, that Caucasians, as we know it, could be extinct. And that is one of the truths that we need to know and we need to accept. The whole concept of having children, we're not supposed to buy into the enemy's idea or, or, or what he concocted of what's called birth control. Mm -hmm. Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that that's not birth control. They're literally trying to kill the seed of black people with vaccines, the food, um, even weaponizing certain things to make people, you know, go against their nature to reproduce. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these are all truths that we must know, especially black people, that we're being manipulated. Manipulated big time. The thing, the thing I, I would say is that the marketing of homosexuality mm -hmm. is another thing that um, interferes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, with reproduction because two men cannot make a baby. There is a thing called design. God designed the reproductive system to work a man's with a woman's, a woman's with a man. That's how you reproduce. The alternative lifestyle offered to us by our enemies through popular culture is not, is alien really to the nature yes, of the right. black man and woman. That's right. Uh, there is no uh, body that is born homosexual. Right. Nobody that is born lesbian. People say, well, I was born. No, 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 no. They, in these vaccines. That's right. They uh, can give you a mega dose of estrogen That's right. that interferes with the development of you sexually from that point on. Then with the subtle suggestions of an evil enemy, you think you are something that you're not. And I'm going to give you a good example. In the scriptures, 
there were people who thought they were Egyptian. They had been in Egypt for 400 years and thought they were Egyptians, but God said that they were not Egyptians and separated them from Egypt. Right. The, other, the other thing which that was prophetic for now, we think we are Americans, mm. which is why, and we want to identify ourselves as an American when that is not who we are. We need to ask ourselves. We've been trying to integrate and mix into and give up our identity for so long and now that we have come to this point where all avenues for justice, all avenues for the semblance of justice have been cut off by the system and the system refuses to recognize our humanity. Mm. So what are we going to do? Beg mm. somebody who doesn't like us to please accept us? I'm just like everybody else. No, mm -mm. you don't need to beg anybody. You are literally... Um, certified by God as one of his children. Mm -hmm. You do not need white America or Asian America or Arab America to tell you who you are. You are the original people of the earth. And it is you that give them their identity, yeah. not the other way around. That's right. You are chosen by God to build a new world order. No one else is chosen by God to be the cornerstone of something altogether new but the black man. Come on. And everybody who comes under our rule will get justice That's and right. fair treatment everybody. and they will love our rule because we are not going to kill and murder That's right. and rape and That's maim right. and start wars based on lies and send drones to kill innocent men, women, That's and right. children that we disagree with. We're not going to rule like the wicked demons of the U.S. government and Israel and France and England and Germany rule. Our rule will be a just and loving and nurturing rule That's right. that will be akin to the rule of God himself. Mm -hmm. That's where we're headed. That's what we need to understand as who we are. We are, as the minister said today, we are a part of God. And God is a part of us. Yes. So when Jesus said, I am in the Father and the Father is in me, that wasn't just for Jesus. That wasn't just for that black man 2,000 years ago. That's for the black man right now in 2018. You need to understand that you are in the Father and the Father is in you. The originator of the heavens and the earth has put, deposited himself in you. And you got to now get into him. Hmm. So that you can say, I and the Father are one mm -hmm. at a certain point in your development and be a perfect reflection of God. And going to the voting booth doesn't mean you're connected with God. Right. I know that there's, there, everybody's talking about the midterm, mm -hmm. but you need to talk, think about the long term. Mm -hmm. The hell with the midterm. Because the midterm is going to put you in the middle of a bunch of foolishness like it does all the time. That's right. Now, I vote in most elections. I'm not telling you not to vote, but do not put your hopes in voting because we voted Barack in. What was he able to do? Was he able to stop one officer from blowing you away? Was he able to get the, the, the million and a half almost black men out of jail because he was in there eight years? No, they stayed in. And many of the thousands that he could have pardoned by under political pressure and fear, That's he right. left those people in jail who were convicted without any physical evidence. And Barack Obama wasn't willing to risk it all for his own black community. He wasn't willing to do that. He was a good brother, but he wasn't willing to do what Jesus was willing to do, which is to die for his people. Mm -hmm. You understand? When you talk about being Christ-like, you got to be willing to die for your people. That's Christ-like. And that's, that's when we look at Minister Farrakhan, we look at the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we look at people like Marcus Garvey, you looking at, we, we look at people like Nat Turner, you're looking at literally Christ-like people that's right. who were willing to die for what they believe in, and the black man must know the truth. You, now, you're not an American. You will never be integrated into America. Mm -hmm. Never. It's never going to happen. They have already stacked the courts with all of these judges that will never find racial discrimination. Mm -hmm. 
That's right. And let me tell you. But we I, I, the, I mean, caller, me, the caller, the call back. Well, yeah, think, yeah. But I think you hung up on him. No, I didn't, I didn't hang up on him. I didn't hang up on him. He hung up. But here's the okay. thing. Here's the thing. When you look at the judges and how they are, how they are all stacked up there, and, it, and when you file some discrimination suits, if mm -hmm. you lose the suit, you have to pay the legal fees yep. for the people That's right. that you sued. Isn't that something? Which means that you not only have a risk of losing, but you could actually lose whatever they lost that's in defending the themselves. Mm. Now, that's the way white folks set it up because they know we can't afford to pay back a debt and they set up with judges yeah. who will never even see that's right. discrimination against black people. They can see reverse discrimination when it comes mm -hmm. to affirmative action, mm -hmm. but they can never see discrimination against black people. Clarence Thomas, at no time that he has been on the bench, has he ever ruled in favor of black people being discriminated against. He has never seen it. Now, he has seen reverse discrimination, they call it, but he has never seen discrimination against black people, have, has never acknowledged it, to my knowledge, in one opinion that he has written. Scalia acknowledged it in one case. William Rehnquist, maybe two. But with all of the racism that you know exists and I know exists, they, they can't see it. And with Brett Kavanaugh, all semblance of any kind of Fourth Amendment right, First Amendment right, all of that is gone. And it's going to be gone. And keep in mind, Breyer, if those of you who hope in the law, Breyer is almost damn near dead. Hmm. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg has is, is got one foot in the grave and the other one on the banana peel. All of the liberals are damn near dead. And when they die, for those of you who think you, you maybe there's hope in the court, no, no. Trump is going to be right there to appoint somebody just like Kavanaugh who no, doesn't no. even recognize black life and the importance of black life or recognize discrimination. You will not be able to make it in the system. The system will not work for you. Let's go ahead and take this call. Go ahead, call. How you doing, Brother Darrell? I'm doing pretty well. Let me put some more volume on you. Okay, go ahead, sir. Okay. Brother Darrell, you said that uh, Donald Trump might just be the last uh, president that America might have, and uh, you know, I totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. Ever since this this guy been, uh, you know, running this little clown show in the, in the White House, he's, he's got America slipping. Just recently, we had Russia and China teaming, tag teaming up to do uh, war exercises, uh, and which was the largest uh, exercise since the break of the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. Then you have these category four and five hurricanes that's just devastating America. Just like, you know, Jesus Christ was predicting way back when, you know, that, uh, you know, we would be hit by these, these terrible type uh, natural disasters. And then this guy here is just, you know, he's, just, he's dropping the ball. And, and we in America is pretty much suffering, suffering for it, man. Well, I, I would, I would uh, definitely appreciate your call. The only thing I, I would do, would disagree with y'all, is that he's dropping the ball. He never had the ball ever in the first place. He never had the ball. He's always been in it. Now, I wanted to mention this. Uh, the brother, uh, brother, uh, brother uh, Botham, mm -hmm. Jean, mm -hmm. who was uh, killed in his apartment, mm -hmm. and it says, killed at home while black. Yep. So even when you are at home doing nothing but just being in your house, even when you are at home in your house yes. and chilling, relaxing at your house, you will still be murdered by the police. You can, integration cannot happen. Hmm. You cannot, you, you, you're, you're, you're wasting your time talking about this racial harmony. It does not exist, nor will it exist. We've been working on this thing for 460 years. It hadn't happened. It won't happen. Okay? This is, this is further evidence. And after all of that, for those of you who are in the voting, you had a black police chief, black mayor, over the city of Dallas. Do you know 
that they still, after they murdered him, and after it took three days to arrest the, the, the heifer, I mean the woman, they went in and did a, 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 a search of the house to see if they could find some drugs. Had nothing to do. You already said you had the wrong apartment. You already said you were in the wrong. You've already been arrested. Why then would you want to see what was in his apartment? What does it have to do with the fact that you already admitted that you blew him away under false pretenses? And even that is a lie because it, you, the man had a red rug in front of his door mm -hmm. to distinguish his door from another right. door. But he was a young person who was a successful businessman. He was a young progressive person. That's and right. this looks like a targeted assassination mm. so that the future of our people, young people, will, will, will not be bright. So that he could not be that example. Right. If you ever notice, it's always, you know, the business people were more likely to be lynched years ago. And most lynchings occurred on Sunday after church. Mm -hmm. And there's an article in the final call that talks about how the, uh, the, 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 that the church members, members of the black church, mm -hmm. are challenging the hypocrisy right, of the right. evangelical movement right. who's supposed to be all about morality, but the person that they're backing. They, they, were, they, went, they went hard against... Uh, Bill, because they thought that maybe he might give us a couple of crumbs. And it says black Christians challenge the racism and hypocrisy of white Christian evangelicals. And that particular challenge uh, has to go forward because the only authority that we ever had was moral authority. Hmm. And a lot of that moral authority we, we let go because Barack was in there. And we didn't want to seem like we were going against the first black president. But we got to understand these offices are temporary. That's right. Our people will be here for trillions of years. Mm -hmm. And we cannot allow for another generation to be destroyed. So just like everybody else was putting pressure on Barack, we should have put the righteous pressure on Barack to do the right thing by us. The Latinos got something. Mm -hmm. The gays got something. The lesbians got something. Israel got something. The conservatives got got a got their tax cut made permanent. Everybody got sometimes billions of dollars out of Barack. Right. But we got nothing because we refuse to act. And, and there's a saying in, in, in the street that says, a closed mouth don't get fed. Right. We closed our mouth, and many people thought we were wrong. But history shows now they're going to bring Barack back out now. They're going to bring him back out to campaign for Democrat. But he's not campaigning for the black male. That's right. He's not campaigning for the black female. He's not campaigning for the issues like this. He's campaigning to keep a certain party that is controlled by white folks in power. So he's, tra he's campaigning to help a different group of white folk get back control of the Senate and the House. What does that do for you? Because Democrats were in control of the Senate and the House, I think, when Bill Clinton signed the crime bill. That's right. Democratic control of anything has nothing, it hadn't helped you. Uh, black folk are still in jail. Uh, and, 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 and I want to say this, that now that white folk are hooked on a bunch of opioids, now everybody is saying that we have to be compassionate. These are people with a problem that incarceration is not going to solve it. These people need understanding and care. Hold on for a second. They need understanding and, and, and care. But our young people needed 25 years to life in federal prison. It's interesting that now that it is white folk that are running into a problem, that now all of a sudden incarceration is not good enough when it was the only thing they recommended for us during the height of the crack epidemic, which was started by Ronald Reagan, where Ronald Reagan bought, brought tons of hundreds of metric tons of dope into the country and use the dope proceeds to fund wars in Latin America. This is the criminal regime of Reagan. And all of these people idolize Reagan. And y'all, do y'all remember what Ronald Reagan said when Martin Luther King was, was assassinated? 
Ronald Reagan said he had it coming. In other words, he deserved it. Because he, he said that, that, that King was, was trying to follow some laws and not follow other laws. Meaning that he was organizing the sit-ins and, and doing what they call civil disobedience. And Ronald Reagan did not like Martin Luther King and thought Martin Luther King was a criminal. But this is the man that white America loves. And if they love the man that hated King and hated justice, then again, it goes back to we got to know the truth and we got to face it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. See, when sometimes when a woman loves a man or a man loves a woman, that love that we have for that woman or that man that may, well, they may not even be good for us. Mm -hmm. They may not even be good for us, but because we love them so much, we just stay there. And sometimes a woman will stay there and get punched in the mouth, get choked to death mm -hmm. because she refused to separate from an abuser. Mm -hmm. We as black people in America, we live under the, under the abusive government of the United Snakes of America. That's, they're an abusive government. They are trying to cut our sperm count. They, they are using black uh, uh, um, Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. to literally decimate our ability to reproduce. Vaccines. Vaccines. Food deserts. All of this. Education. It, it's just, it's astounding that we still have hope. And, and, mm. and, and, if, and some of us divorced our spouse after one argument. Mm -hmm. We had one or two arguments and we went straight to divorce court and and, and, and went to using all kind of profanity against each other mm -hmm. and wouldn't, wouldn't even try to work it out. Right. Okay. But when it comes to uh, these other folk, after 400 years, we still trying to work it out. Some of us been married three times, been divorced three times. We didn't want to work nothing out with our black spouse. But when it comes to white folk, we, are, we will be here for the next 500 years trying to work something out with them hoping and selling that false hope to our children mm -hmm. that one day racial harmony will be achieved. One day. And this is the article. Uh, mm -hmm. Not your brother. That's what the most honorable minister Louis Farrakhan said. And the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So these people are just. They're not. They, you know, yeah. it, it, We just have to tell you the truth. You're not going to be able to integrate with somebody that wants you dead or incarcerated. Hmm. There's no way to work that out. You want to live, they want you dead. They're unwilling to back off of wanting you dead. So therefore, there's no way to compromise. The only thing to do with irreconcilable differences mm -hmm. is to separate. That's right. And in, in, in common law states like Mississippi, Alabama, there is that in the law where if you have irreconcilable differences, mm -hmm. that that's a grounds for divorce in under, under the common law mm -hmm. uh, uh, states. You can... If you can't reconcile those differences. And how do you reconcile? We want to be able to prosper. We want an equal share in what we have built in this country. Mm -hmm. They want to deprive us of that. They want us dead. They want us incarcerated. They screw up the country and run up deficits. Mm -hmm. And they want to blame black mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. for what they, they, they're the ones that have been in control of the budget. Mm -hmm. And we worked for free for hundreds of years and do you know this country is at a twenty trillion dollar deficit, and 20. we we didn't we didn't cause that. And when you calculate, and you go ahead and calculate at three percent interest, what is the interest on twenty uh, trillion dollars? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's an astounding figure, and in a, in a couple of years, the interest on the debt. Is slated to be the largest expenditure of all expenditures mm. in the U.S. government. So, so when interest becomes your largest thing, not wow. health care, not military. That's like credit card debt. Yes, it, 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 is, it is astronomical. Mm. And she will never be able to pay no $20, $20 trillion in debt. And the, and the American dollar will fall. And once it the dollar it's already fall, falling. If you check the forecast, it mm. said that we're headed for another bubble. A housing bubble. They said that you you have the uh, education bubble with the student loans. Mm -hmm. People are paying back these astronomical 
you know, uh, student loan debt, mm -hmm. you know, and you have the housing because uh, they have now, they don't have the subprime loans, but they do have something similar to it. So you have a condition now where you have people that are coming off of the petrodollar. So you have, uh, what country was it? It was, um, oh gosh, I think it was in Latin America. No, it was Turkey. Turkey is having financial problems right now where they're looking at, um, I guess, they're in so much debt, they can't pay off their debt. So you have, mm -hmm. I mean, all of these things that are headed towards catastrophe mm -hmm. under the, the president that they said that the, was the businessman who could be able to get, you know, America working again, to be able to bring back jobs to America again. People are bailing on America. Well, Other countries know. are bailing on America. Without a doubt. And and when you when you conduct yourself as a as a as, you know, for lack of a better term, a butthole mm. and you conduct yourself in a very uncivilized fashion, uh, Donald Trump speaks in a very stupid way. But uh, a lot of us, uh, a lot of uh, people in the South, uh, because of a, of a lot of ignorance uh, among uh, the, the redneck uh, slash coon ass population, they will go along with Trump because he speaks in a very elementary language right. that maybe they can understand. Right, right. And without any intellect or any, any thoughtful analysis that he can explain uh, any any opinions that he's arrived at. So you're, you're talking about utter and complete but see, stupidity. This is the thing about it. Now, a lot of the, um, the white right-wing conservatives are talking about, they're even coming out saying, that Donald Trump is a racist and that, you know, that they're just saying that the reason that his base, because they keep going back to his base, no matter what he mm -hmm. says, his base, he, they can't rock his base mm -hmm. because they know that the base elected him based on the, you know, concept of white supremacy. So is there hatred for black and brown people and other people who are not white that keeps this man going. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you have all of these tell-all books that are coming out. Bob Woodward, his book coming out. They are laying this out, but none of it matters. They can say that, that this man said that Donald Trump, I was listening the other day with the news cycle, where they went back to one of his campaign speeches. He said, I can shoot someone in the middle of the street in New York City, and I still will get elected. Yeah, he, he said he wouldn't lose any support. That's, he, right. that's right. That's what he said. And so, you know, when you have a, a, an electorate that hates somebody so much. Mm -hmm. I well, mean, well, they think that, that Donald think Trump is, the, is their savior. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. going to get to him. They think that, that Donald Trump is their savior. The great white hope. But he is actually their punishment. And mm -hmm. I wanted, wanted to mention that. Let's go ahead and take this call. Go ahead, call you on the air. Go ahead, call you on the air. Yes, good evening, sister. How you doing? Oh, good evening, sister Deborah and brother Daryl. Good evening. Hey, very, very, very good program that you have in uh, this evening. You guys are really, as uh, far as I'm concerned, uh, speaking truth to power. You know, uh, we always being blamed for something. We are being blamed for the deficit, but the deficit is on the right. You know, uh, they get in the office, they claim they're going to cut the taxes, they're going to cut this, and the thing of it is, they don't cut anything, but uh, uh, the poor people are uh, out of everything, and they always add on to the riches and make them richer. So, you know, all those things that uh, we are talking about, uh, you guys are trying to bring the light to the people that is not so awakened to the facts of what's going on. This is why a lot of times, you know, we may not like the process of voting, you know, but they're telling us this is the way out, but seem like all of us, a lot of us are scared to get out of the box and uh, be broader minded, you know, and you guys are trying to broaden other people's minds to let them know 
they don't have to be in captivity. That's right. You know, all they have to do is uh, have the heart and take that, that, that yellow paint off their back, you understand me, and stop being nanny to them, and they would be all right, you know. Yes, but most of them, we don't want to look out for one another. We only look out for self. You guys are trying to look out for a multitude of people. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Okay, Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Uh, and, I, of course, I want to say this right quick, uh, that this right here, as we have it, is your real ballot. This is how you vote. Mm -hmm. Wherever you, whatever you spend this on, is mm -hmm. gonna you're gonna you're gonna keep it going. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're gonna you're gonna keep it going by what you do with this. So uh, the idea, and matter of fact, what you do with these will have a greater determination. Oh yeah. Than uh, what you do in that in that in that booth That's because true. you're gonna keep all these things going with this. No matter how how you vote, and if we put these together before they fall and have no right. value, mm -hmm. okay? Because everything has to be done in time. America is for sale. America is for sale. You give America paper, she'll give you land. Mm -hmm. You give America some of this paper, and she'll give you factories. That's right. She'll give you everything, as Amal Lewis Farrakhan said, for this paper. And then once it falls, you'll have everything in your hand because America is falling. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, America is falling and falling fast. And now you can't even sit at home in your house doing nothing. And and for the black mayor and the black police chief, this is why we roll with Farcon, because these other people are straight up lame and weak. They allow uh, for this man to be slandered mm. after they murder him. Come on. And for them to allow that, for that police chief, somebody got to check that woman. Mm. I'm pretty sure she's a good sister. I'm pretty sure she's conscientious. And, and perhaps the, 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 the white officer who murdered the brother wouldn't even have been arrested were it not for the black right. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But the thing we got to do is not allow them to be slandered later. So why, what you need a search warrant for when you already murdered him and you already admitted that you were in the wrong apartment and you already admitted that you shot somebody that you shouldn't have shot? No, we don't need a search. Yeah. The only thing we need to do is to deal with the deal with the with the evidence as it exists. You don't need to go and try to slam them, and then they're gonna say they found marijuana. Because if you were in the wrong, they apartment, probably planted. Think about it. If you were in the wrong apartment, then that meant if that was your defense that you were in the wrong apartment, then you don't need to investigate what that person is doing in the apartment because that meant that if you went in the wrong apartment, then mm -hmm. that was an illegal entry. There you go. That's why I mean that, that, that essentially is what it was illegal. Um, so even if you mm -hmm. did find something, mm -hmm. doesn't is it matter. It is well, but but here's the thing. For them, and, and and keep in mind, and this is why a lot of times you know with black elected officials, this is why a lot of times our young people don't vote because they get weakness like this, and our young people hate weakness. If you are going to run for office, and I'm telling this to everybody that would run, have a backbone to oh. give people something to vote for. Come on. To give people somebody to vote for, and do not allow yourself to be corrupted with a $30 steak dinner because some lobbyist is taking you out to dinner, and then you sell your people out for sometimes uh, nothing, like nothing. Donald Elijah nothing. Muhammad said, for a mess of porridge. Hmm. And that's that's what, what well, a lot the of times happened. said today that you know the political scene is just like he asked the question: Would you get into a dirty tub of water with a ring around it? And he said that you wouldn't do that. He said you would have to, you know, let the water out, get some clean water before and, and clean the tub. The, and clean the before tub. you sit yourself. That's in. right. Mm -hmm. So he's he's likening this tub of dirty water with the ring around it to the political system. And so you may have good intentions. You get in clean, but you're going to get dirty once you get into that political uh, tub or yeah, political yeah, strength. Yeah, but, you know, the minister did say, and that's true, and, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's absolutely a fact. But the, the Amber Lewis Farrakhan did say that you got to make sure that you don't go into it with that, with, with that mind. Yeah. You know, and he used but Barack Obama. It is hard. It's, no, it's hard. Mm -hmm. That's why we as people have to watch Whoever you vote for, right. you gotta watch him. Go ahead, go ahead, brother. You're on, you're on the air. 
bridging those there because they're both listening the time we got a lot. You know, something you just say is stuck in my crawl and uh, dealing with all these issues that I can let you the picture. You think you go down to the police chief and mayor. Well, you know, similar situation uh, out in Baton Rouge. We have uh, the elected leaders or black who got in the, uh, in the power in the back to us. Look across the state, and we have more black elected officials, and we got a lot of sisters mm -hmm. in, in power in a lot of those cities. From back when we had a lot of civil rights violations, the feds had to come in and right some of that. Uh, we have uh, a lot of families in Louisiana who are black, uh, like you and I, brother, there, but we still don't have power. So we we are filling ourselves on the notion that having political power, sitting in office, going to somehow lead that race. Brother Dar, do you have any clue? Can we do? And I think it's your point. You know, I, I really don't have a clue. People, and all we got is a hoop and a prayer. That's my time. Thank you, sir. Well, um, the, the thing about it is until we come together without unity, Without the unity of the whole, the whole will continue to suffer. We must come together. And Donald Trump is, with his policies, and with him uh, desiring to go into the major cities with 50 caliber machine guns, hmm. that there may be what happens before a lot of us that might be. awaken. And, and come together. You know, you're going to have to come together. It, you know, to me... There should be no division among our people in New Orleans right, after right, Katrina. Right, right, right. There should be no division, but yet there is. Mm -hmm. So, so, so the, 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 the thing is that there's going to have to be something great and painful before our people go together, something so humiliating. Yeah. So, yeah, you're right. So, so like uh, the dry bones in the valley, the winds mm -hmm. are going to have to blow on us, and we're going to have to unify in order to alleviate these problems, our unity will literally solve 95% of That's our right. problems. But we have to come together to get those problems solved. And some of y'all don't want to even. You, 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 you buy the daily advertiser, but, but sometimes when we come out with this, you're afraid of a black paper because you say it's, it's printed by somebody who happens to be a Muslim. you part of the problem. You, you're keeping us behind by your narrow-mindedness mm -hmm. mm -hmm. with your own brother. So, you know, because nothing, to a, to a lot of us, nothing really has, has authority unless it comes from the greater white society. And that's, that's right. just being real. That's right. So uh, we, we're going to, we have about 30 seconds left. We want to thank you for uh, tuning in to the Community Defender. And, of course, we're going to be coming right back at you with a harder show with Black Man Must Face and Know the Truth. Yes. And we're going to keep on bringing it to you as best we can. God bless you. Keep studying. Keep working. Keep working to take care of and keep together your families, and we look forward to being with you soon. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.